What's up guys? It's December 6, 2023. We had a downtrend. I hope you guys have made some money in the downtrend. We haven't had a downtrend in a while and this downtrend was kind of tough to hold if you, in my opinion. I didn't catch uh, the full move. I was kind of scalping out. Yesterday we had a range. We gap we didn't. We gap down, filled the gap, had a second leg and then we just ranged for the rest of the day. I was I was more bullish just because of the higher lows from the previous day and the market has been in a bull trend. But if we think back to the daily chart, we are still overextended. So it wouldn't make sense for some sort of leg down. So yeah, today we had a gap up. And you know what's crazy is I almost, I almost went short here with one micro contract just think for that 20% chance. But then I saw the news we had here and here. So I was like, whatever, or I think it was here. I was like, nah, not worth it. Anywho, strong gap up, bar one is a bear bar. When we have a strong gap up, and uh, when we have a strong gap, and the first bar of the day is the opposite, there's a 20% chance that that could be the high or the low of the day. So we have a gap up, and the first bar of the day is a bear bar, so that's the opposite bar. That's a 20% chance that this is the high of the day. Looks like today was that 20%. So lucky for us, it's gonna be rare if that happens again, we won't miss it. First six bars of the day is bearish price action. There is some range bars. These four bars are rangy, but they're also ranging within this bear bars. <coughs> Excuse me, range. Bear, bears try and close the gap for a try and bulls bounce off the EMA. I, I was thinking about getting long if they had made a double bottom above yesterday's high. That's a good place to look for reversals or continuations. In this case, it was a good place to look for reversals. This ends up being a bear flag. I did not take that trade, but here's the bear flag. It's kind of like an expanding triangle almost. Here we go. So we have a gap up, bear bars, range. So I'm thinking more selling pressure today and somewhat range bound. And we almost, you know what's crazy is we almost got a resemblance of this exact price action. And what I mean by that is these two bars, we sold off one, two, these bars we ranged and then this bar we sold off so that's kind of I didn't yeah, that's kind of interesting bears break yesterday's high and break the EMA I think this is a credible breakout because of the price position is above yesterday's high that's a good place to look for reversals yesterday we sold here so I think it's a good short you can go short here and put a stop here and go for a measured move I did something similar I can't remember exactly where I got short, but I will find it. 2R was hit. Right here is 2R. It's, it's, I'm going to shrink it just so you can see. Yeah, so 2R was hit of this bar's range. And the market starts to consolidate. We had a big up, big down move, and we go range bound. It's not good to trade here because this is a double bottom and a double top. Here's our double top. Here's a double bottom. So it's like another triangle bear flag. Best thing to do for this is wait for two bar follow through. And I did get short around these two bars because of two bar follow through. I got out on this bar thinking when the gap was closed and bulls would start to range or reverse around the midday. So we have leg one, leg two, leg three, and we go into a range. The market ranges for about two hours. I'm counting this as a range and when I just want to fix this real quick. When the market's ranging, it, the previous price can influence the range. And that's I, can, I think that's what happened here today. Well, that is what happened. Look at the, well, there's more selling pressure than buying pressure. Every time the market got to the EMA, it would sell the EMA. It was the That was the play, just sell the EMA today. Put a stop here, put a limit order here. If you go short around the, the EMA, you're gonna make money. Markets are range bound with downwards pressure. And they kind of put in a double bottom right here. This is when I stopped trading the markets because I thought the markets would range after a big up, big down. I kind of called it. I ended up missing the easiest leg, but you know, it is what it is. That's trading. <clears throat> so yeah, we have a gap down and then we range and we have kind of a falling bear flag. Lots of bear flags and the gaps are staying open today, but they're also breakout points are getting tested. I'm make it light. Here's the first gap. 
here's another I guess yeah here's another gap so we have two gaps that open two gaps that open uh, is a what is it requirement is a is is we should be noting that for a trend day when we ever have two gaps that open that can mean the markets in a trend because in range bound environments the gaps get closed here we can see three gaps staying open here's a third gap and you know honestly there is another gap I also want to show you guys something pretty interesting I was watching the line chart today and I just it just I want to show you guys why I'm doing bodies over why I measure the body gaps instead of a measuring from Wix and I'll prove it to you in a second here and this is the way it's explained to me I'm not coming up with anything new I believe this was like the way Rose explains it so I'm not the founder of this idea I'm just passing along the information here are all the bear gaps we can see them that it's hard you can scalp to the EMA I took one scalp to the EMA and then called it because I didn't like it I'm gonna leave a couple open just so we can see I just leave the first one open so yeah up I mean I meant to say up so yeah it was a downtrend and it was short the EMA you could it was really easy to just you know just get short and hold for a couple points you could do that you could even buy the dip and scalp to the EMA we are in a broad bear channel so I don't think beginners should scalp the only reason I took a buy was because I thought we were bottoming if I caught on to I didn't admittedly catch these two gaps had I paid attention to the gaps I most likely would have just held my short because we reversed above the high we have the gaps we see the bear flags Fair play, I didn't trade with the channel open, not the channel drawn, but the channel was respected. We get to the upper half of the channel and we sell off to the lower half. We start at the upper half, we sell off to the lower half, and we stay below the lower half of the channel for a while. We pop up and we turn off the EMA. So yeah, it was a good day for the bears. I think they've been. I think a lot of people have been expecting some sort of sell. It doesn't have to be a good sell. I was thinking today. I was like, why did today's downtrend? have so much deep pullbacks like in a good downtrend I wouldn't expect to see you know this this gap right here get closed and then I was thinking well for the last two three months we've had so much bullish pressure it's hard for maybe institutions or whoever's moving the markets to not be buying at levels and and if you bought this you would actually make money bulls make money throughout this whole downtrend so it's a weak downtrend the deeper the pullback is the weaker the trend is when on a strong trend we want to see shallow pullbacks and there's not really any shallow pullbacks until we get here and I think this was more of a test of yesterday's low because we were so close to it we bro they, they broke out the double bottom so it's natural to go to the next support level in trends I'll speak on the downtrend because we're in a downtrend <clears throat> excuse me in downtrends all minor support levels will get broken and the market will race to a major support level and including uptrends all minor resistances will get broken as we race to a major resistance and that's we can see that here because look at all the double bottoms which is why I think why myself and I'm sure a lot of other people buy the tip is because it looks like a good double bottom double bottom here double bottom here double bottom right here this was a double bottom that when I stopped trip when this double bottom failed I was like yeah I'm not playing around anymore I'm messed up I, I didn't I walked away green but my last trade was red because I was trying to get long on it off the double bottom and look just as Albrook says in I don't know why I extended that in downtrends all minor support levels get broken and we race to a major support level minor support minor support minor support and we broke a major support level actually we broke a major support level great follow through uh, not excuse me not great follow through great bar bad follow through you know we want to see at least another bear bar after this breakout which is why i was really hesitant from shorting once we got around here i started to get hesitant because this bar didn't the breakout bar didn't have good follow through but and this breakout bar also didn't have good follow through i, I was short and i got out here because of this bar i was like well this could be a range bound environment it wasn't I uh, I caught it early because I had a wrong I started to get the wrong idea of the day so I was like you know what I gotta pull the brakes while I'm up I'm really trying to get myself prepared for next year to just 
do the right thing. Something I like that I think it was Al Brooks said, or I'm sorry, I think Brad said, Al said that you just got to be stone cold when you're you're in a wrong shade. You just got to get out. Who cares? Get short again if you were if you thought you were wrong and you ended up being right. Just be cold about it. Just get out. Just if you're wrong, just get out. It'll say if I'm trying to also think I have the abilities to find a green trade, a good trade. So it makes no sense for me to wait and see. Is this shade gonna work? The market cycle repeats itself, so I'll just wait till tomorrow if I have to. Because I'm confident I'm starting to get confident that I can end the day green. I'm not saying I will, but I'm trying my best to just like Al says, just be cold about it. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Call it. And we're learning, you know, it's not I'm not gonna be trading like this forever. I'm gonna there I do fully expect maybe in maybe in 10 years from now I don't know how long it's gonna take that I will trade this whole day and maybe take a bull scalp profitable I learned it I saw an important lesson today that I wanted to talk about and I'm sure most of you know this but why we measure body gaps over excuse me why we measure from the body over the wicks and it's because institutions do that and I can prove it to you see this wick that I'm making a gap I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make the body blue and then this so this red one is the wick and this blue one is the body, right? Institutions shade with line charts. Look, the wick never got shown. There is no wick being shown where the strong money is trading. And that this is actually looks easier to trade. You can see this double top here, you can see this lower highs, you can see this. So if the strong money is measuring off bodies because they also do measured moves then it makes sense for us to also measure off bodies because we're just the market to move off machines so follow the way the machines measure and we'll be good anyways it was a good day it was a downtrend it, I don't have too much to say because it was short the EMA the whole time bear flags yeah let's get into the, the daily because this is starting to get interesting Oh, yeah, that don't matter. I was say something, doesn't matter. <clears throat> Looks like bears are starting to get some momentum. Two legs down, one, maybe three legs down. Let me see. One, two, cap up, three. Maybe we see a little bounce. The 50% level from last week's holding quite well. What is this week looking like in terms of a bar? We're halfway through the week. Wow, okay, yeah, look on the weekly, we're getting, they're getting their first pullback. First pullbacks tend to fail, so maybe we tag the EMA on the daily and we reverse up somehow, get stuck at a double top and sell, I don't know. Price action is fractal, so the way we treat the five minute is the same way we're going to treat the weekly, the same way we're going to treat the monthly, because it's all the same. Just the, t the outlook would be different. Here's the monthly chart. We have the bull flag here with good follow through. We we've been we've been ranging. I mean, excuse me, we've been in an uptrend for quite some time. I just got off work. I'm a little tired. Back to the daily. Pretty pretty good looking bear bar. It kind of sucks that we. We did close below yesterday's low. So why does it not look like that on the daily? This is, oh, okay, I guess it's it's kind of hard to see. Anyways, a, clo a close bet below yesterday's low is good for the bulls. And I think they can get some continuation maybe later this week. We could range tomorrow. We range 80% of the time, so it's always safer to from what I understand, it's better to assume we're in a range till we're not. And that's kind of what I'm picking up is if we can just think it's safer to think we're in a range than we're not and wait for the proof of the gaps and the breakouts. And Al Brooks, I've heard him say this, that we are we are going to know when the market's trending. I don't think any of us don't know when the market's trending by now. So if we don't know the market's trending, there's only one other option. It has to be range bound. They could only be range or trending. So yeah. Pretty good day for the bears, got some continuation, small pullback. This actually isn't good for the bears. If this bar, if like if this doji didn't exist, 
I think that would be great for the Bears because they have a sell with follow through, and this Doji is closing on slow. It's still a it's still a trading range bar because the wicks are bigger than the body, but that's okay. Look, ooh, that's the after hours bar. Hourly chart is looking great for the Bears. They are putting in good bars below the EMA now. Here we had a lot of wick bars. Here's a good bar with no follow through at the bottom of last week's 50% level. But now look at this bar, these bars. So bears are starting to collect bars under the EMA, which is a good sign for the bears. I think for us, it shouldn't even matter. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna trade it up or down because we're day traders. Anyways, <laughs> I hope you guys are learning. I hope you guys are studying. Keep studying, keep learning. My brain is fried from work today. It was raining outside. Hit the follow button if you're not following me. Have a good night, guys. Keep studying. We're going to close the year strong, and we're going to make a lot of money next year. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.